I just want to introduce um, Oscar, uh, Oscar Gamouche, who's an, an artist um, from uh, originally from Stockholm and received his MFA from Komsvart University College of Art and Design in 2009 and currently resides in Kalmar, Sweden. Uh, Gurumush's work is focused on the social values of words, utilizing quotes, compilations, or the displacement of existing texts. <laughs> As starting point, uh, linguistic structures are examined in relation to identity and the construction of the subject. All his works are more or less text-based, through, though the works themselves can be depicted in a number of different ways and techniques, such as painting, photography, objects, video, prints, and also tattoos. <coughs> His work has been exhibited and published at, for instance, National Museum in Stockholm, Kalmar Konst Museum, and the uh, Kiwid Biennale in Moscow, Sleepwalker Gallery in Toronto, Flamme Fulag in Oslo, and the Shoshana Wayne Gallery in Los Angeles. So it's my pleasure to introduce Oscar <coughs> Gemush. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess you said half of the stuff I was going to say myself, so I don't know. Is the mic okay, I think? Yeah? Yes? Um, geez, what is this? What happened here? Um, yeah, I use text. Um, the biography is the starting point of what I do. And I'm about, I'm here actually, I'm invited to talk about my latest book, but I'm gonna try to contextualize it a bit by showing you uh, something. I'm, I've been on four ferries, international ferries, for the last three days, so everything is like, yeah, not standing still. So I, I'm, you might get the impression that I'm a bit confused, and I am. Uh, so, but uh, I was in Poland. I met Lisa on the ferry, uh, but we were there on uh, for totally different reasons. I won this competition, so I'm really glad for this. Um, public commission in uh, Danzig in Poland. It was about public space and art and technology, about wind energy. And a lot of artists from different countries were invited for this contest and uh, I won and I'm so glad. I'm gonna read, you, read to you a bit of my proposal um, you'll be able to see the text up there, actually. <laughs> In a society that is becoming all the more secular, religion is being substituted by the devotion to nature. Along with this devotion comes the demand for the protection of the environment and the development of renewable energy. Wind turbines have proven to be a reliable source of alternative energy for sustainable society, but no one seems to want them in their own neighborhood. With their delicate white rotors slowly turning in the sky, they are monuments of our environmentally conscious modernist society. Like magnificent kinetic sculptures, their towering figures decorate the landscape, reminding us of mankind's ability to control and exploit nature's powers for the benefits of modern civilization. One could see them as works of public art in rural, rural settings, but they are not often appreciated for their aesthetic values. Claims are made that the turbines are noisy, even dangerous, but maybe they're just like trees. How many more do you need to look at? That is a quote. A tree is a tree. How many more do you need to look at? Made by, said by Ronald Reagan. 
Uh, he didn't want any national parks in California. He was a government, and this was in the late 1960s. And um, people wanted this Redwood National Park, and he didn't. He didn't get the point of having all these trees standing up there. And they asked him, but don't you see the beauty of them and, and stuff? And he was like, no, they're, they're just a bit taller. I don't know. A tree is a tree. How many more do you need to look at? And so why this quote and why Ronald Reagan? Because the park where my work is to be installed is called the Ronald Reagan Park. And uh, so I thought it was funny to use this quote. And hopefully you can see, oh, this is fucked up. Um, so what I did, Everyone else in this competition, they made like windmills and turning stuff and technical whatever, I don't know. And, uh, but I didn't. I took this quote and it's not done yet. It will be done in May next year. So what they will see in their park are these concrete letters and this quote. So I guess you, you can see it, right? A tree is a tree. How many more do you need to look at? And the font is the iconic Hollywood sign. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I'm going to show you two more works just to, for you to get a feel on what I do. These are paintings oil on canvas, made by hand. Um, they're all quotes from novels written by male authors. All of them claim to be heterosexual, so there are no gays here, and that, that is important for the context. Uh, all of the quotes are from the novels are descriptions of characters in the novels, male characters, about their bodies. Um, there are 12 of them, and so in an exhibition showing all 12 of them, you can see like 12 male bodies. Uh, let's see if I got another one in English. They're all in different languages. French. Yeah, like that. Just quotes. <clears throat> and um, This is my exam work from, uh, from the Art Academy. Uh, I took a piece, like a small extract from all of the works that I've done during my studies, a small detail, and I made tattoos out of them and put them on my own body. I'm sorry for this, I just can't get a picture right, but I think you get the point, sort of. So, um, I made the works by quote, and then I quoted my own work, so to say, changing context, changing media of it. <coughs> and it goes on and on. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm also going to show you um, a video work I did. Let's see if I can. last year. It's a triptych, video triptych. So it's three movies, but you have to see them together. And um, I was in the army before I started my, before I got this idea doing art. And uh, I don't know if it was a good one, but, but that was the idea. 
And, uh, but I was fascinated, I've always been fascinated about structures and linguistics in structures and structures in linguistics and, and so this work is the only work I've ever done with no text in it, but it's based on a text, it's based on the sentence Ordnung muss sein, it's a German sentence meaning like order will have, has to be, will always be, it's hard to exactly translate it, but and Signs with this sentence you could find all over the regiment. That is Swedish. Once again, Swedish regiment. You can find these German sentences. This German sentence, Ordnung muss sein. I thought it was interesting to relate that to the body 10 years after I quit my military career to see how, sort of, how, what kind of Ordnung was still in my body. And uh, especially in that one, we're taught to, uh, excuse me for my English, but to like, take apart and put together the weapon again and again and again with a bag overhead. And I was curious about how, if that was like still in my body. And uh, apparently it was. But there are some hesitations once here and there. That's when I start thinking of, what I'm doing, but immediately when I stop thinking about it, it's just there, the hands just move as they should move. Um, mm, mm, mm. So, since I used text, I soon started to think it would be kind of logic to write books. Books are texts, right? So, my first book, came in 2006, it's called Sent Items, but it's all in, in Swedish, it's just the title in English. Um, and that's sort of more or less all the emails I wrote during my th first three years as a student at Konstfak. And why is that then? Well. You get a narrative from it. You have this character, this student, this wannabe an artist, writing email in this structure, in this university college, trying to communicate, trying to perhaps understand the structure, make a structure, whatever. Writing emails to people in his class, professors, whatever, trying to get sponsors. And so here they are, the emails chronologically. And this is my third book. It's called Vad gör du just nu? That is Swedish. You could translate it by What are you doing right now? Um, but you could also translate it with What's there on your mind? Because what you just knew, that's the sentence that, the first sentence you meet on Facebook. The sentence in Facebook encouraging the users to update their status. You know the frame on top of the wall? I mean, everyone's got Facebook, right? No one, is there anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, I thought so. And I thought this is a great structure for a book, for an autobiography graphical novel. I mean, if I write stuff, what I'm doing all the time, then you can like, go through my wall, or actually in, in this direction, to get this narrative and this character, like what has he been doing? And by checking in and stuff, you get the description of places and environments. So I started to using Facebook as if I were writing a book, trying to adapt, to, to take the structures of a novel and, well, using them on Facebook. And I was lucky because in well, this spring, 2011, this Norwegian publishing house contacted me. I wanted to publish it, so hmm, it went well. 
What else is there? It's nothing more, except for tonight. Sh sorry, to, shall I do this now? Yeah? yeah? You can. I can? Yeah? yeah? I will then. <laughs> yes, I can. Be all you can be. <laughs> Talking about books made out of copy paste, like uncreative writing, there will be some shown tonight at the library in Karlskrona, the city next to us. Um, you'll see a lot of works there trying to discuss, so to say, digital media and public spaces. And uh, so there will be video screenings, some artist books, and an app that Jessica will tell you a bit more about later. Mm, and you're very welcome. And I guess you'll talk a bit more about it also because you haven't been on a ferry for the last <laughs> days and night. Okay, that's it. Thank you.